In this video, we are going to take a look at how we can add the array action to a dynamic block. Here I have a parking lot and I have some parking stalls that I would like to copy in the other locations, which would take quite a bit of time, so I want to array those instead. I could use just the regular array command, but I want to make a dynamic block so that it's easy to do these from here on out. I'll begin by double clicking on one of these parking stalls and clicking OK to get into the block editor. As with many dynamic blocks, I need to add a parameter and then an action to that parameter. The array command works off of linear parameters. So I'll start with a linear parameter and I'll simply click the top point here and the bottom point, then click to place my parameter. This distance parameter is what's going to be used to drive the array itself. So I'll switch to the actions tab and I will choose the array action. First, I need to select which parameter I want to associate this with. Then I need to select the objects I want to array. So I'll just go ahead and select all of my geometry and press enter. Next, I am prompted for the distance between columns. Now, even though it says columns and we typically think of that as a vertical column, this is based upon the parameter that I chose. So it is going to go up and down the way that I want, essentially making rows. So the distance between them, I uh, measured this earlier and it is nine feet wide. And this particular drawing is a decimal civil units drawing. So I'm just going to enter in the value of nine without the foot symbol, and then I'll press enter. Now I've added the array. So I'm gonna test this out. I'm going to choose test block, and then I will select my parking stall. I'll grab this bottom grip and I can see that it stretches out. So as it stretches out, it, it continues to copy the extra parking stalls there. Now there's a couple things about this that I'm not crazy about. One of them is the fact that I'm able to move my mouse half a parking stall distance and it doesn't really do anything. So I really wanna lock my mouse onto the parking stall distances. The other thing that I dislike is what happens if I grab this top grip? As you can see, it does array, but it arrays from the opposite point and it stretches weirdly and allows me to essentially move the stalls. So I don't like that. I'm going to go and fix that. I'm going to close my test block. So to fix that, I am going to start by getting rid of this grip that I don't need. I'll select my parameter, then right click and go to properties. Of course, you could type CH or PR and press enter if you prefer that. Then I will scroll down in my properties and for number of grips, I'm going to set this to one. That will eliminate the grip that doesn't work right. Then I want to lock this block onto nine foot increments. So in the distance type section, I'm going to set this to increment. For my minimum, I'm going to say that nine is my minimum. And then I'm going to say that it grows at nine foot increments as well. I could put in a maximum, but I really have no idea how many parking spaces I'm going to need. So I'm going to leave the maximum empty. I'll go ahead and close my block editor and save my changes. I'll go ahead and close my properties window too to remove it for now. Now you can see that when I select it, I don't have the array grip on top, just the original insertion point grip to move it. And you can see that it arrays a lot more nicely and gives me some previews for what that's going to look like. So very quickly now I can array the rest of these parking spaces using our newly created dynamic block. So once again, to create a dynamic array, you just simply need a linear parameter and then associate the array action to that parameter. And then of course you can adjust the grips as well as the increment spacing. That concludes this look at adding the array action to a dynamic block.